Ciao, and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. For our 40th episode, we return to Firenze, Italia, and take up an unfinished yet moving work by the master of masters, world-class painter, architect, and sculptor, Michelangelo Buonarroti. For my money, only Pablo Picasso can rival Michelangelo for such a title, demonstrating unparalleled skill and originality over many decades in so many genres. The subject of today's show, Michelangelo's Florence Pietà, also known as the Deposition of Christ, is an unfinished work exhibited at the Museum of Santa Maria del Fiore, the Duomo di Firenze, that reveals not only the artist's most mature vision, anticipating the direction of the next great movement in art history, but also provides a beautiful self-portrait of Michelangelo near the end of his life, capturing a world weariness, a sadness, a kind of peaceful, quiet resignation, the knowing calm that comes only with age and experience. Because of this autobiographical aspect of the Florence Pietà, the work resonates within and beyond the Christ story, demonstrating what humanism was really all about, capturing the most powerful elements of the human experience on this earth in the context of the larger spiritual truths that had previously dominated art for centuries. Thanks for joining us. I have come to love this sculpture, unfinished, abused, and tampered with as it was, by both Michelangelo, whose high standards it did not meet, and who allegedly vandalized it in frustration, and Tiberio Calcani, who attempted to restore the incomplete damaged work, and who added the figure of Mary Magdalene at Jesus' right, after Francesco Bandini acquired the sculpture in 1561. When Dana and I first experienced the Florence Pietà in person in June of 2008 at the Museum of Santa Maria del Fiore, the same wonderful little Florentine museum that exhibits Donatello's wood carving of Mary Magdalene and Ghiberti's original Gates of Paradise, I was struck by the singular powerful expression on the face of the hooded man helping support Christ's lifeless body, and whose figure seems to support to anchor the entire sculpture almost appearing to keep the work from collapsing onto itself. The Florence Pietà is also known as the Deposition of Christ, because unlike most Pietas, or pities in English, showing Christ just after his death and evoking an emotional response at the ultimate gesture of God's love, sacrificing the life of his only son, this sculpture includes aspects of the burial of Christ, including the burial linen, in which Joseph of Amarathea wrapped Christ's body, according to the Bible, as well as a life-size rendering of either Joseph or Nicodemus, art historians remain uncertain, whom the New Testament says helped Joseph prepare Jesus' body for entombment. Given that Michelangelo originally intended the work to adorn his own tomb, which can be found in Florence at Chiesa di Santa Croce, along with the remains of Galileo and Machiavelli, but without this work, the inclusion of the burial preparation is apropos, even personal. In fact, we are now fairly certain that the likeness of Joseph or Nicodemus, to me the most powerful element of this sculpture, was a self-portrait by the artist, with Michelangelo capturing for posterity his own appearance in his final years. But like all masters, Michelangelo does so much more than present an accurate physical likeness carved in stone. In this case, a single block of rough, hard, and flawed marble, ultimately frustrating him and leading him to abandon the project. He also reveals something of his own soul in his early 70s, while at the same time touching on an aspect of the human experience that is universal, so that those who experience this work centuries later can feel, understand, relate to, maybe even share in the sweet sadness, the reluctant but ready farewell, that period in life, near its natural end, that leaves one simultaneously eager for rest, for sleep, weary of this world, and yet pained at taking leave, and at the rapid passing of time. The complexity and seemingly contradictory nature of these feelings, of this state, peacefully resigned, yet full of ennui, is not unlike the contradictory nature of the Christ story, in which the deposition of the Savior's human remains, following betrayal and a violent, painful, and slow death on the cross, 
serves as a precursor to a glorious resurrection and life everlasting. What blows my mind about this sculpture, even in this unfinished and molested state, is that Michelangelo here manages to capture, like no other work I've ever encountered, certainly no Pietà, the elementally human tragedy of this story. Unlike his earlier Pietà in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, smooth, flowing, almost like liquid stone, with an otherworldly, platonic, idealized quality that captures the perfect divine love inherent in the scene. The Florence Pietà, rough-hewn, with the figures connected by human grasps exposed, not completely peaceful, but twisted, almost in motion, with Christ's human flesh front and center writ large, all foreshadowing the mannerist movement to come. With the Florence Pietà, the focus is on the human experience here in this world, on facing death, on reflecting on a life near its end, and on the calm acceptance of one's fate. In true humanist style, Michelangelo explores these themes within the context of the accepted Christian tradition, suggesting perhaps that for believers, this sort of state of grace can be achieved through faith in the Christ story. Finally, a word on the later edition by another artist of Mary Magdalene at Christ Right. The consensus in the field, and a position with which I agree fully, is that Mary detracts from rather than enhances Michelangelo's original sculpture. Her smooth, polished surface, hollow, stone-like, expressionless facade, and the fact that her placement moves the work closer to a purely neoclassical pyramid composition and symmetry, these elements, they suggest to me that Calcani failed to distinguish between this Pietà and Michelangelo's work as a much younger man, missing completely the artist's exploration of the human experience late in one's life, and the foreshadowing of a trend in sculpture and painting toward humanity in motion, in action, in your face. While Michelangelo's own gaze sends the viewer down to Christ's face, which is literally connected to that of his mother, the presence of Mary Magdalene distracts one from the center of the original composition. And the figure of Magdalene, and the way it's connected to the scene, it makes me think of a child running over to help lift something heavy after the adults have already gotten it off the ground, just wanting to be a part of it, to be there. And the figure of Magdalene is carved on a much smaller scale than the other figures in the sculpture. In short, it's all very silly. But in spite of all of that, Michelangelo's Florence Pietà captures my imagination and moves me. When I'm weary or run down or just plain tired of the world, as we all get from time to time, especially as we mature, I look at the expression on the figure of Joseph or Nicodemus or Michelangelo himself, and I somehow gain a perspective a connection through time that provides an empathy or a context that I find comforting. It's funny. In a sense, I find this Pietà less about religion and more about humanity. And it's that connectedness Michelangelo captures here, that shared experience through the ages, that means something to me. Not bad for a nearly unworkable block of stone that was never really finished. But I'm not at all surprised. That's Michelangelo Bonarotti. Grazie mille e ciao. Like I could when I was small And it's so picturesque Looking through the crystal ball